Welcome back to How Fintech Works by Medici Studios. I'm Mei Ling and we're talking about central bank digital currency, CBDC. Now, in past episodes, we've talked about the benefits of this new currency. And we've also talked about what it is that it exactly replaces within the bank. This time, we're going to talk about the three common approaches. The indirect gradual approach, the direct rip the bandage off approach, and then we'll talk a little bit about what a hybrid method might be. In the first approach, the gradual indirect approach, you almost feel like nothing has changed. Now, in the last episode, we talked about M1, M2, and how a lot of that stuff, those time deposits and and, uh, the cash that isn't in your purse physically, your savings account, stuff like that, We talked about how most of that stuff you almost never see anyways. Uh, We also talked about the fact that there's a lot of transfer payments, checks that are given to you by the government. And even now, uh, you know, a lot of people get their tax returns and they check the box that all of it's directly deposited into the bank. Now, with all of these digital formats already in place for most of banks, what would be the first and simplest move would simply be to switch out that currency and approach, oftentimes it's even already in a token kind of crypto format, to a new central bank digital currency. Now, a little bit about that. Uh, Whereas there might be particular things that are tracked by the bank, the central bank will then tell you what the token now needs to do and how it needs to be formatted. So that transition period should be more or less seamless. In these cases, you might not even notice that the transition is happening unless something technological really goes wrong. But even then, it would happen gradually. The shift would happen slowly. And the interaction is really just between the central bank and the banks themselves. You feel nothing. In fact, China is already testing this with four banks in their country. And I think what we'll see from them is going to really tell us a lot about what to look for when there's issues in making this transition. Now, the second approach, which is far more a rip the bandage off, very direct approach, would be for the central bank itself to start taking in accounts. And there are some countries where this might make sense. If you're a smaller country and your banking system isn't quite there anyways, uh, you know, some of the benefits can still accrue by just doing it one way at the very front. You would have an account with the central bank, and the central bank would be administering that account the same way that a regular bank would. Now, before you start to think, hey, why don't we just do that for every country? You know, sometimes people don't appreciate all the things that a bank does. Banks have to do the accounting for it. They have to do the intake and customer service. When you have a problem, you may want to call the bank. You may not want to call the government and depend on them to service uh, the, the entire population of a nation. That's a lot of extra stuff that a country might have to add on to services that they don't currently have capacity for. Additionally, you have to remember that the banks do a lot of these things that are often called Uh, KYC, know your customer, anti-money laundering, and also things like uh, terrorism fraud prevention. All of those things, if you went with just the, the central bank doing that work, would have to be developed as infrastructure. Now, it turns out that a lot of you high tech people are like, hey, that's not that big of a deal. I could write a script for that. And maybe you could. That said, There's a lot of money at stake and it will take time. And even the banks are very quickly adopting all types of fintech, but that's a different series. And now the last approach is the hybrid approach where you're really doing a little bit of both. And this really might make sense depending on the status of a given country's banking system. It may make sense for people to have accounts directly with the government. And it's not so crazy. There are are, for example, a lot of cases where uh, one opens an account with the treasury. Maybe they have some treasury bonds and they have an account there. They don't receive anything in in, uh, response for it. They just receive uh, a notification or some kind of digital receipt that they have a bond and then later they get the return of that bond still in the same account. That can be replaced with a token very easily and it would look approximately the same as what's already going on. So those three methods are, broadly speaking, the methods that are involved with CB 
DC. Now, a lot of you may be thinking, why is she only talking about transactions that are within a country? Isn't CBDC great for cross-border transactions? It, you know, uh, money transfers between different countries? Well, the answer to that is yes. And in fact, we're going to talk about that next. So stay tuned. Mm -hmm. 